Hi guys, it is a it is a topsy turvy day here in the end times in uh, the soon to be wasteland, the soon to be wasteland of Raleigh, North Carolina, here late in the afternoon of Thursday, September thirteenth. 2018 as already the little bundles of joy are are being blown around are being blown around the planet here on uh, Thursday September 13 as we await the big blow and uh, so for reasons I can't quite understand here on uh, the final day on planet Earth at least in North Carolina I actually I opened up my email box to find that uh, I'm already getting kind of a day early my ecological meltdown roundup rant from mongabay.com from Center for Biological Diversity and the uh, and don't forget Washington Post so anyway I've got time to squeeze out one more ecological meltdown roundup rant uh, before I die in the oncoming big blow and uh, so I better get right to it, and I'm not going to make this a two-part. I'm just going to, oops, sit here and uh, and make this all one one roundup rant to see how the planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour as uh, as the big blow hits North Carolina. Do not have my no shit Sherlock button, but at least I have my bullshit, my bullshit detected button. We're gonna see if this little child wants to uh, take care of the bullshit detector button. All right, duties. Okay, I know you guys are not going to believe this. Brazilian legislators break the law attack the Amazon, and trade freely with the world. This is from Mongabay.com. A new Amazon Watch report offers evidence showing that six prominent Brazilian politicians are either charged with and or guilty of a wide variety of environmental, social, and economic crimes. All six are active in the agribusiness lobby of the Brazilian Congress, and all but one are up for election in it in October. According to the report, the six have been strident advocates of the agribusiness policies that are slashing environmental protections, exacerbating Amazon deforestation, and rolling back indigenous land rights. Yet, their agricultural commodities, can you say probably soy, beef, lumber, and maybe palm oil, uh, yet their agricultural commodities and those of their political and business allies are being sold to the U.S. and the European Union with importers including soft drink manufacturers such as Coca-Cola, the poultry producers and others. Huh. So the report says that consumers are thus unwittingly empowering the agribusiness lobby's drastic legislative environmental attacks and it calls for importing countries and companies to take responsibility for their actions. That was bullshit. Yes. Okay, let's go from the shithole country of Brazil to the uh, shithole uh, country of Colombia, just up the street from Brazil. A couple of stories out of Colombia. A look at land hoarding land hoarding in uh, in Colombia. Yes, I bet. Okay, as criminal mafias 
take over Columbia's forest. Yes. Uh, and a bunch of the, these endangered rainforests in Colombia are in these very sensitive environmental corridors that connect these uh, national parks. Uh, so, new paramilitary groups, including former factions of all of the competing guerrilla groups, Criminal gangs and drug trafficking enterprises have taken control of the territory, <coughs> causing immense environmental and social damage. The region is now facing an acceleration of what many have long feared, deforestation, land grabbing, expansion of the agricultural frontier, and an increase in illegal mining and illicit crop cultivation. As I say, I'm sorry this little planet nibbler does not have the no shit Sherlock button or she would be punching it. Okay, let's go way out in the middle of nowhere to the over to the Marshall Islands to the Bikini Atoll where the U.S tested its largest thermonuclear bomb in 1954. And so uh, the scientists are over there in the coral reefs looking for Klingon damage from all of that. Uh, but basically what they're finding uh, is uh, just the same shit going on in the Bikini Atoll is everywhere else. Uh, widespread evidence of recent ocean warming yeah, seems to be having more of an effect than a nuclear explosion. Okay, we have our, our newest, uh, well I guess this one is earlier than previously expected or previously thought, humans reached Madagascar 6,000 years earlier than previously thought. Hmm. So take a wild guess how these anthropologists have discovered that humans have been in Madagascar a lot longer than previously thought. They started finding these elephant bird, uh, which is a, a giant ostrich, which of course uh, it, it was one of the first uh, species to go extinct in Madagascar, they started finding these ancient giant elephant bird bones and the bones showed chop marks, cut marks, and depression fractures consistent with immobilization and dismemberment by prehistoric humans. Again, I am so sorry we don't have the no shit Sherlock button. How the hell do you think you find the earliest presence of humans on any landscape in the, in, 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 on this planet? You go look at, at megafauna species bones and you will find chop marks, cut marks, and depression fractures consistent with immobilization and dismemberment. Yes, you will. And uh, then I love that. So they follow this story about these primitive and uh, noble savages just hitting Madagascar and uh, starting to wipe out all of their fellow earthlings. Uh, and then we have, the, you know, all of these stories about indigenous people saving the planet. You know, I, I love it when they just ask a question. And in this question, we're going to go over to the shithole continent of Africa. Why keep Africa's dry land forest alive. There you go. Huh. In Sub-Saharan Africa, 
80% of charcoal and firewood used by about 2.4 million people is harvested in woodlands found in dry land areas. And I'm sure the areas of dry land are going to be stretching. Uh, experts say it is time to start packaging these fragile yet rich and highly adaptive ecosystems into investment into investment opportunities uh, investment opportunities Bullshit detected. Take precautions. okay from sub-saharan africa over there to jakarta indonesia one of the one of the biggest shitholes on planet earth talking about these games called the asian games where these these athletes in jakarta were, were choking to death on pollution i guess okay from the let's go over to the shithole country of thailand where i think i've been having this rant for years hmm <clears throat> Illegal wildlife trade on Facebook in Thailand is open for all to see. In an assessment of, of Facebook, uh, wildlife trade watchdog traffic found 1,521 listings of live wild animals for sale on Facebook. The animals on sale belong to at least 200 species of which about half are protected by the country's laws while the rest are not regulated at all. Yes. The most popular uh, thing being advertised on Facebook was the was the uh, Slow Loris, a critically threatened primate. All right, you will never believe this about the the round table on sustainable palm oil. What is the latest? Hmm. The Forest People's Program recently filed five new complaints against palm oil giant Golden Agri Resources. The complaints were filed in the, the RSPO, of which the company is a member. Hmm. Yes. Uh, the Forest People's Program say it is egregious, egregious for Golden Agri to stay in the RSPO while it violates the organization's standards. Hmm. Do you think so? Anyway, guys, I just got to jump ahead. We're getting ready for a picking party for the end times. Uh, wow. Never thought of this. I'm so glad I will be back to a no shit Sherlock button in next week. Criminalization and violence are increasingly used to silence indigenous protests, according to the UN. Indigenous peoples are facing criminalization and violence the world over. Tactics employed by private businesses and governments seeking to use indigenous lands for their own gain through economic development projects. Wow, do you think so? The UN, uh, blah, 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 has seen firsthand a sharp rise in instances of physical violence and legal prosecution against indigenous peoples in countries like Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Guatemala, Honduras, India, Kenya, Mexico, Peru, and the Philippines. There you go. <coughs> D, D, 
the this one is too complicated to get into where where we're talking about the the noble savages who let's see when was it uh, in 2009 these uh, this is the Paiter Surfui tribe of Brazil uh, became the first indigenous group in the world to design and implement a major forest conservation and garbage storage uh, project. Okay, they got all of these awards, and guess what? On Monday, uh, the project was suspended indefinitely due to an onslaught of diamond and gold miners and loggers which has caused a dramatic surge in deforestation within their 958 square mile territory. Uh, in its early years, the program was incredibly successful. Huh. But analysts cite multiple reasons for the project's suspension the intrusion of external, powerful, self-interested actors, hmm. the lack of law enforcement in the indigenous territory, and the lack of state investment in indigenous education, health, and livelihood programs that could have alleviated individual economic and social pressures to secure short-term financial gain. And that is all a bunch of gobbledygook for saying that one of the main reasons it was suspended is that the very noble savages that uh, were, were managing their own piece of indigenous lands were in fact uh, the ones now working for all of these planet eaters to secure their short-term financial gain. People are people. All right. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I've I, I've got a lot on my plate here. I'm getting ready to die tonight, and this is my last rant. So uh, uh, I just got to run ahead. You will never believe this, that tropical forest governments need help to achieve their commitments to slow deforestation and are not getting it fast enough. Hmm. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, moving on. Here's, uh, mentioned this before about this big-ass salmon escape down there in Chile that, um, you know, where was it? Like 600,000 of these these farmed salmon got loose a few weeks ago in Chile, uh, fucking up all the salmon down there. Let's see. Okay. Climate leadership means keeping fossil fuels in the ground. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yes. Uh, this is talking, you know, this shit going on in, over there in, in California. This is a commentary by this, uh, this person whose name I can't pronounce, argues that California Governor Jerry Brown can show true climate leadership by phasing out oil and gas production in the state of California. Wow. She notes also that large volumes of crude oil from the Ecuadorian rainforest are processed in California, making Brown's state complicit 
and the environmental problems plaguing indigenous communities in the Amazon. Do you think so? Uh, okay. Um, already been over this story. I mentioned this in the mainstream media about eight species of birds that have recently gone extinct. A new study has found that eight species of birds are likely to have completely disappeared. Yes, uh, there you go. And four more are dangerously close to extinction, if not already there. There you go. Anyway, guys, I just need to jump ahead. I think I hear people arriving for the uh, for the picking party for the end times. So let me just charge ahead. Let's go over to Endangered Earth from the Center for Biological Diversity. All right. The Center for Biological Diversity is celebrating a stunning week. A stunning week of climate activism. This is what the resistance looks like. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, and today we're putting more heat on California Governor Jerry Brown, who is hosting a global climate action summit. We will be there in force, urging, urging Governor Brown to be a real climate leader and halt new fossil fuel development in his state. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Okay. What is our, our planet eating interior secretary up to this way, this week? Zinc's oil and gas leases carving up Wyoming habitat. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke sure has a funny way of following up on his plan to improve habitat for migrating western species like pronghorn and mule deer. Yes, a new analysis by the center shows that by the end of this year, Zinke, uh, under direction of Donald Trump, will have offered up 1.2 million acres of pronghorn and mule deer winter habitat and migration corridors in Wyoming for oil and gas drilling. Yes, this is uh, the center's Randy Spivak. Quote, this study should be a wake-up call for anyone fooled by Zinke's claim to care, Zinke's claim to care about wildlife. His push for massive new frack fields will drive these magnificent animals and their ancient migratory ways to the brink. Okay, the center is now offering $15,000 for the condor killer who murdered a California condor a few weeks ago. Fifteen grand, it's all yours. Wow, I think I remember having this rant several times. As long as we're over there in California uh, to save the planet, state of California, oil drilling toxins used most in LA's disadvantaged areas. Huh, do you think so? Uh, this is the center scientist John Fleming, quote, this is going on in Los Angeles, California today, Oil companies are using massive amounts of chemicals that make people sick. Hmm. In communities already enduring high rates of health problems, state regulators give out drilling permits like they're candy. 
Yes, they do. Uh, anyway, okay. We have a petition. We have a petition. Feds must end pesticide use on National Wildlife Refuge in Alabama. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yes. National Wildlife Refuges were created to save wildlife, not to prop up industrial agriculture. Yes, do you think so? Agricultural pesticides and endangered wildlife like whooping cranes do not mix. Okay, I mentioned this already a couple of days ago about the Plains Pipeline Company found guilty of felony in this oil spill off of uh, Santa Barbara in 2015 which killed hundreds of birds and marine mammals blackening the, the, clo the coastline and meanwhile the same oil company has applied to build a new pipeline in the same location while ExxonMobil is now seeking permits uh, to transport oil so it can restart three offshore platforms in the region and we're waiting for they're waiting for Governor Jerry Brown's uh, rubber stamping of that but let's just head over wind up this week's ecological meltdown around up rant with those eco Nazis over at the Washington Post oh, I love this a no-brainer climate change has made Hurricane Florence worse. Of course, they wrote this headline when Hurricane Florence was a Category 4 hurricane. Now Florence is a Category 2 hurricane. So we will see about that no-brainer in a few hours. Uh, several uh, stories on this in the mainstream media today about how ex, ex uh, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt is uh, now tapping a coal industry titan who sought rules changes at EPA. So uh, Pruitt in, in this revolving door is now going from the head of the EPA to, lobby, to lobbying for the coal industry. And he will be lobbying the guy who replaced him, which is a coal company lobbyist, Andrew Wheeler. So, let's see. The guy who just held the coal lobbyist job, who is now head of the EPA, is now going to become a lobbyist for the coal industry to lobby a former coal industry lobbyist who took his job as head of the EPA. Anyone who says we are not living in the twilight zone anyway. What is the League of Conservation voters up to? Uh, they are donating an unprecedented $60 million to Democrats they believe will counter Trump's, they believe will counter Trump's environmental policies. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. We will see, we can only hope, uh... Let's see, two more. With a shrinking Environmental Protection Agency, Trump does deliver on his promise to cut government. Quoting a former career staffer, quote, who, who, who quit the EPA, quote, my feeling was I could do better work to protect the environment outside of the Environmental Protection Agency. But finally, we're going to wind up 
sitting here as a Category 2 hurricane now wimps in to North Carolina. Category 6? Climate change may cause more hurricanes to rapidly intensify. A new study shows that we have a lot to worry about when it comes to changing hurricanes as the planet warms. There you go, and we're going to wind up there. We're going to wind up this week's this week's uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant right then and there, uh, and get back to the storm of the century. Yes, as we cover my little dog with these little planet nibbling bundles of joy. Uh, what do you think, little dog? There you go. <laughs> there's there's a picture. There's a picture of the the whirlwind in North Carolina tonight. Smoke them if you got them, whether you're, you're in North Carolina or not. We are so fucked. I'm off to a picking party. My last picking party before I die. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. What are you doing with all those little planet numbers all over you like that? You're a crazy dog.